Hi guys, welcome to this video. You know, I believe legal immigration should be straightforward for masters or PhD students in the United States, especially in 2022. Do you disagree? So today I'm going to talk about six ways by which you can legally become a permanent resident of the United States. And some of these ways that I'm going to talk about are self-sponsored. And by that, I mean they do not require you to have an employer to sponsor you and also they do not require you to marry a citizen some of them i know that from first-hand experience so let's break down some of these six ways now well the first one i'm going to talk about is family-based immigration this is the most common path to permanent residency in the u.s it's straightforward you just need to find a citizen to sponsor you you know a united states citizen that's why a lot of people try to get married to, you know, a citizen. And also, if you have, of course, parents, uh, you can do that. But of course, not a lot of us have that, right? Especially if you are here as a student in the United States on F1 or J1 visa. And apart from that, uh, a lawful permanent resident can also sponsor your green card uh, as a spouse. Now, the second part is what we call employer or employment-based immigration. Now, this involves you to find an employer to sponsor your permanent residency. And um, typically, you would have to go through uh, some work visas like H-1B visa or O visas. And for this to happen, before you can, an employer can, you know, sponsor you, they have to prove, they really have to prove that um, no U.S. worker is available to fill the position. So there is this lengthy process of advertising the position and you know ensuring that there are, there are no U.S. workers or U.S. citizens or residents available to take that position before they can sponsor you. And that process is called legal certification. Uh, it's lengthy and costly. So a lot of companies don't mind, especially the big ones. They really don't care. They would happily do that. But the problem is um, that there is a maximum number of visas that you can that the government allows per year. And then there is always a lot more H-1B applications. So what happens is this visa is usually administered in form of a lottery, in a lottery system, I, except if you are in academia. Academia is a little bit easier to get H-1B sponsored than um, other industry. Now, if you want to learn more about H-1B visas or where you can you know, find companies that sponsor H-1B visas. I'm going to leave a link in the description below um, that you can use to, you know, if you go to that particular website, you will be able to see companies that sponsor the most visas. So if you are willing to work with some of them, you, you would know that there is a high chance that they would eventually sponsor um, your H-1B uh, after or during your, your OPT. So the third part I'm going to talk about is um, filing for permanent residency under the EB1 category. Now, this EB1 category is reserved for persons with extra ordinary ability in the sciences, business, or arts, or education, or athletics. Um, and that's usually called EB1A. So there are different categories of EB1 visas. So EB1A is for extraordinary ability, uh, people who consider themselves in, the, in this category can um, file for the EB1A visa. Now the EB1B is for outstanding researchers or professors. Um, now the, a, a big distinction between the two is that uh, the EB1A is self-sponsored, you know, the one I talked about as uh, reserved for persons with extraordinary ability. So it's usually self-sponsored, which means you don't need to go through an ex employer to sponsor you. Of course, there are a lot of evidence that you have to um, prove, to, that you have to show to the government. Uh, it has a high, <laughs> there is a high burden of evidence that you have to show. And that's why this particular visa, you know, the EB1A, is usually called the Einstein, uh, the Einstein visa. So, um, you should know that it's, it's not easy to attain. Uh, but the EB1B, 
that uh, is meant for outstanding professors or researchers needs a job offer. So an employer needs to sponsor you for that. And um, that's not easy to come by. Now, if you qualify under any of these categories, the EB1, A or B, uh, you get to access green cards straight away. And um, your family can get green cards as well. Unlike the H1B that I talked about earlier, where you have to work for the employer for some time and before the employer can qualify to sponsor your green card. You know, uh, but for EB1A and EB1B, it's, uh, you know, immediate. Now, one of our partners here at Bestman Academy qualified for the EB1A visa as a student. And this is the interesting thing. She did that as a non-STEM student, okay? Uh, because most people think, uh, these things are easy or maybe only available for STEM students. That's not true. We have someone who did it as a non-STEM scholar. So uh, what she did for us is to you know, prepare a comprehensive resource on how to build evidence as a student you know, to qualify for this EB1A category or other self-sponsored categories that I'm going to touch on later. So um, if you are watching this video and you are interested, there is a link in the description that will take you to where the resource um, is. And um, you can start learning how to build your evidence to qualify to self-sponsor yourself for a green card in the United States. Now, um, there is another part called the EB2 category. Now, um, this particular category is reserved for persons with exceptional ability in the sciences, business, arts, or you know any other field, uh, or professionals that have an advanced degree, which will be a master's or a PhD. Now, people with a bachelor's, I think, by law, they can apply if they have five years progressive experience in the field, uh, but you know that's hard to come by especially with the other evidence that this particular category needs. But this is a common part that a lot of masters or PhD students can um, use if they plan for it you know, well ahead during, during their uh, stay in the US or during their courses. Now, to qualify under the EB2 category, typically you need a job offer and your employer needs to go through all this labor certification process that we talked about earlier. However, it is possible to request for a waiver of all this process you know, under the EB2 category through a means called the National Interest Waiver, NIW. Um, so if you've not heard of that, you've probably been hearing of NIW. It means National Interest Waiver. And basically what that means is you are petitioning the government that you have something important uh, or something critical to contribute to the United States. And it will be in their best interest if they can waive the requirement of a job offer or employer sponsorship so that you can stay in the U.S. and continue your work. But again, there is a lot of evidence that you need to plan for, you know, as um, you are in the U.S. studying or wherever you are studying. There are a lot of things you need to consider. And um, this particular part is what I used to become a permanent resident in the U.S. Uh, so what I did as well, you know, just like we did for the EB1A category, I developed a comprehensive resource for Bestman Academy to explain how to build evidence or how to plan to qualify for, for the NIW in the US. And um, you know, there are a lot of benefits, there are a lot of benefits to uh, take the training that I developed for Bestman Academy. Uh, so if you are interested in planning for this, uh, building evidence for this, and um, also all the documents that you need, please check the description below and um, get started today. And by the way, that uh, particular resource is mainly for students or postdocs that are in the U.S., but anyone else can take them if they are planning to you know, come to the U.S. All right, the fifth means of becoming a permanent resident uh, in the United States as a scholar or you know, as a student is, of course, to become a refugee or an asylee 
in applying for review status or asylum status. Now, of course, um, you probably know the difference between the two, but they are kind of similar. But uh, if a refugee is actually someone who is granted that particular status outside the United States, but an asylum seeker is already in the US, okay? And that person is just maybe seeking admission at the port of entry, or they already entered legally and they are trying to change status. Uh, or some, some people enter legally as well and they try to claim that asylum status. So that's another part that people um, use. You can become a permanent resident after one year if you are approved. But again, there is uh, some unique evidence that are needed for this. And um, <laughs> if you are thinking of this, good luck with that. Now, the last one, which is the sixth path uh, to permanent residency, uh, especially for students, is um, to go through the diversity visa lottery. Now, this is not available for a number of countries, and I know for a fact that it's not available to Nigerians, uh, but a lot of people uh, from different countries can qualify to participate in the lottery. Now, usually there are 50,000 visas available through the visa lottery, and um, there's an, about an average of um, 15 million applicants every year, which means your chance of getting that visa, not through this means is less than 1%. Good luck with um, that if you are still feeling lucky. These are some of the realistic ways of becoming a permanent resident in the United States. If you are a student or a postdoc or a scholar uh, who is trying to you know, move to the US or if you are in the US already on an F1 or J1 visas, these are some of the ways that you can realistically do it, okay? Of course, there, is, there are a lot of other ways. Feel free to do your own research and um, consult your own attorney as well if you uh, need legal advice on any of these parts. Don't forget to check the description below for all the resources that can help you self-sponsor your green card either as a STEM student or a non-STEM student. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll continually talk about these self-sponsored parts to uh, permanent residency in the US. So hit the subscribe button and like the video so YouTube can show it to other people, please. I'm Dr. Ojo and um, I'll see you in the next video.